Um, <clears throat> So I'm going to share screen that. Hi, Veronique, welcome. First. Excuse me while I try to get to my desktop to open up the refuges and presets. And now I'm going to share screen. Um, okay, I just have been informed that I'm I've been signed out, but I'm still here. Um, so as long as it's working, I will. It's working, Daryl. I can see you. I can see your screen. Great. I, I had to give you permission to um, to share screen. That. Yeah, that's probably the okay. message you saw. Okay. Thank you. So we can start recording. started. Thank you. So, um, yeah, beginning again, always beginning again, um, taking refuge. Uh, it's a, it's a practice that we do in a formal way and we do, uh, we begin again at any moment, um, it, of awareness that, somehow we're feeling uh, disconnected or disoriented from our heart, our, our deepest orientation toward, toward truth, toward love. And so uh, that can be our, our mindfulness bell to take refuge uh, again. And so beginning by honoring the Buddha, honoring that what is most significant, most uh, central in our lives is our orientation toward liberation, truth, compassion, and, uh, and our, these refuges, which are, can be understood as both outer refuges in, in, a, in, in the Buddha, in the teachings, in the, in the community of the practitioners, and also, and most essentially, inner refuge inner refuges and in, in our own um, awakened being already awakened and um, and the the dharma as it is unfolding in this moment of mindfulness this moment of insight and and the sangha in this body this body which is uh, practicing and embodying the teachings at this moment so so um, so taking refuge in Buddha Dharma Sangha, and then we'll chant the precept. So, so as you as we begin, please feel most welcome to chant with me with your mic off. And those who are present, please chant with me. And it'll be lovely for those who are online to hear more than my voice. Uh, and um, uh, and and we will uh, and then pause and 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 then chant the precepts.
Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Sama Sambuddhasa Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Sama Sambuddhasa Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Sama Sambuddhasa Buddhang Saranam Gachami Damang Saranam Gachami Sangam Saranam Gachami Duty Ampi Buddhang Saranang Gachami Duty Ampi Damang Saranang Gachami Duty Ampi Sangam Saranang Gachami Tati Ampi Buddhang Saranang Gachami Tati Ampi Damang Saranang Gachami Tati Ampi Sangam Saranang Gachami <clears throat> So these, these five precepts that we're going to chant together uh, or, or that you'll just listen to or reflect on as we, um, as you hear them. Um, these are, you see on the title, training in peaceful conduct. So it's, it's really important how we approach these precepts. Uh, they're not um, kind of rules, uh, commandments, um, lists of sins, uh, you know, for which we will be punished if we don't obey, um, which is the mindset that many of us have around religious teachings. So, uh, you know, we've inherited it, even if we haven't had a religious upbringing, it's, we've kind of absorbed it. Um, and, uh, and so they are really training, uh, training to live a life which is um, ha happy and beneficial for ourselves and for others. It's how do we show up in the world? How do we show up in our lives? How can we live with a peaceful heart? And the essence of that is uh, non-harming, ahimsa, uh, the, just this attitude of respect for life, honoring life, and, uh, and, and recognizing that uh, like us, like just just like us in in their own way all beings want to be happy all beings want to be well and so these are ways of and in this these are ways of embodying and, and enacting that in our lives in this in this uh, iteration uh, from the early buddhist tradition they're framed in what we refrain from doing uh, refraining from destroying life refraining from stealing refraining from sexual misconduct, from, from lying, from using intoxicants, which cause heedlessness. And so, so these are um, ways to um, kind of put a, a boundary around our, our, our thought, speech, and action uh, that to, to, to support us and protect us, um, to remind us because of course we will, uh, we can't, this is not, perfectionism has no place in these, in this practice. It's, it's just always counterproductive. And so when we find ourselves adopting that perfectionist mindset, we need to, to really, you know, bring that self-compassion um, to ourselves and, 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 and just begin again, recognize that this is an aspiration and a practice and a training, uh, and it can shine a light on when we are 
you know, most essentially what it does is shine a light on what, when we are driven by greed, hatred, and delusion. Um, because that's what, you know, the violations of these precepts come from. And each one of these also has the, um, the kind of the, the positive iteration, which is not to destroy life and to, uh, to su support life, to support through generosity, through, through kindness, um, and so on for all, for each one of these, reflecting on, you know, what, what could we do to actually uh, cultivate the qualities which, which will um, enable us to, to be freer and freer from, from these kinds of uh, misconducts or unwholesome actions. So I'm going to chant them in Pali. Please feel free to read them in English if you, if you like, um, and uh, join with me. Panati pata veramani sika padam samadiyami. Adina dana where amani sika padam samadiyami. Kame su mi chachara where amani sika padam samadiyami. Musa wada veramani sika padam samadiyami. Sura maraya maja pamadatana veramani sika padam samadiyami. Ida mi sila maga fala nyanasa pachaya ho tu. Sadu, 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 anumodami. May this training in peaceful conduct help to bring about the knowledge of the path and the fruits of liberation. So every time we, we recognize that we're acting or speaking motivated by grasping or by delusion or by anger, and we, we just pause and we allow ourselves to let go, just allow ourselves to release that drivenness, um, then, then that is bringing about knowledge of the path where we're growing in our understanding of, of uh, the path to liberation. Um, so, as uh, as I thought about, you know, what what would I like to, uh, what would be beneficial? What would I I like to? What might be uh, a good uh, arena of dharma for us to to dive into in this uh, in this coming year? Um, hi. Please come in. Welcome. There's uh, there's some chairs in the in the room there, and there are also some here. some cushions uh, if you are happy. And please please use a, a big zafu because you'll be much more comfortable. Yeah, please just take a breath and arrive. So um, yeah, just really uh, kind of reflecting on what might be a um, uh, 
a, a big kind of um, juicy uh, topic for us to work with over the next months. And um, yeah, I just, uh, I just landed on, um, you know, let's, let, let's explore the Satipatthana Sutta together. Let's, um, let's dive in. It's so rich. There's so much in there. And, um, and it will also uh, be something if, if I happen to be absent on a particular uh, Sunday that uh, it would be easy for, well, easy, it would be accessible for the uh, people who are uh, filling in and teaching to, to, um, to choose something from this vast uh, and complete discourse uh, on Satipatthana. So, um, so every, uh, every Sunday, um, I'm going to offer a little talk um, on, on uh, the, the four foundations or the four establishments. The so, um, foundations is a, is a kind of a, a static word. It's like you get the sense of there's this building and it is a foundation, but, but really establishment or establishing even to, to put it in the form of a verb uh, gives us maybe a better sense of that these are really uh, arenas with which or within which we can establish the practice of mindfulness. And the word sati in sati patana is uh, the Pali word that has been translated into mindfulness. And, um, and so if you like, I would, um, I would encourage you to, uh, to get hold of, if you don't already have this book, um, the Satipatthana, Satipatthana Meditation, A Practice Guide. Um, yeah, Rosmina, I wonder if it, you could be kind enough to put it in the chat. Um, and, um, uh, and it's by Bhikkhu Analyo. And it, um, it comes with, uh, also, there are some guided meditations that, uh, that you can get online that are part of the book. Um, and, uh, and so I won't, I won't only be drawing from this book, um, but, but this is a really wonderful, uh, it's such a, a rich book and um, uh, really a wonderful uh, text to, to have and to work with. It's a text which um, for anyone who is serious about practice uh, is, is just um, kind of one of these basic texts that you, that you wanna have um, to refer to for many years to come. Um, yeah, so, so the word sati is, uh, has been translated as mindfulness. Um, it's been questioned whether that's really the best translation because uh, it seems to emphasize mind as distinct from body. And, uh, and really this practice is so much about uh, an embodied awareness. And, um, and so uh, Biku and Elio says, you know, another word for, for mindfulness um, could be awareness. Just, just the word that, that when, when we're aware, you know, it's, it's an awareness in which we know that we're aware. And, um, and it's, it's different it's distinct from consciousness because consciousness is always arising and falling. Sense consciousness. I'm, you're conscious of the sound of my voice. You're conscious of sights that are around you. You're conscious of the, the touch sensation uh, where you're sitting or lying down. Um, you're, uh, you're conscious of 
all kinds of things, the feeling of the air on your skin. But as I name them, you might become mindful of them, but you might be conscious of them without not being really particularly aware of them. But uh, so, so mindfulness is a quality of attention, um, which is in the present moment. Uh, so we can be mindful of a thought or a memory or a projection into the future, a hope or fear about the future. We can be mindful of that. And that is always happening in the present moment. So, so if we're mindful of a memory, you know, like if we're lost in memory, we're not being mindful. We're still, we're still living in the present moment, you know, like we're we're not in the past, but our mind is drawn into the past. But if we're mindful of remembering, then uh, then that is a, a, a an expression of mindfulness. Um, so um, so mindfulness. Uh, so Bikunalia talks about how mindfulness has this. So the word sati actually has this um, sense in it, the meaning in it of <clears throat> of remembering. So, and the, and the word actually remember is. Uh, has a kind of implication of the body because when we use the word member, we're talking about you know the members. It's a kind of embodied word. So this remembering, um, which comes, it's not that mindfulness is or sati is about remembering, but when we have this um, awareness, which is aware in the present moment and knows it's aware, uh, we're more likely to remember. So if we're, if we're, and he uses this um, simile, like it's like going, you know, if you're going on a trail in the woods with a guide, and then, you know, you know that you're going to have to find your way next time you go without the guide, then you're paying attention. You're, you're really looking and paying attention and being present and bringing that collected kind of focus to each moment of experience. And, and so, he, so that's a kind of um, a, an example of what it may feel like that. So, so mindfulness, um, you know, calls forth a quality of focus and and attenergy, attention and energy, attenergy. That's a kind of interesting <laughs> word. Yeah. Uh, and um, Ms. Sittins, if we have questions or if we have any thoughts, can we share that with you or should we wait until the end? Yeah, let's let's wait if you don't mind. Thank you. Thank you for checking in about that. Um, so um, Yeah, so 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 mindfulness. So just just to really uh, maybe I can begin by you know and, and the beginning instruction will simply be a, a reminder of you know what is this cultivation of mindfulness? It's a it's a it's a quality of attention of awareness that we that we do cultivate. Uh, it's not something that we don't have uh, naturally. It is something that that naturally is part of of uh, it's a mental quality that we have access to. And like anything that becomes strong within us, we, we uh, give attention to it and cultivate it. And we do that in our practice. Um, it's, it's, it's 
in the present moment. It's not driven by greed, hatred, and delusion. So, so we can be mindful of greed. We can be mindful of, of anger arising. We can be mindful of feeling confused and spaced out, you know, which are deluded states of mind. Um, and, 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 uh, and so, you know, the mind may be colored by that and mindfulness is also present so that we are not drawn more deeply into those states, but rather can come back to a more stable uh, quality of awareness. So, so, um, and, uh, and, and, and also um, in the practice of mindfulness and the practice of sati, there is a quality of warmth, which is really important to emphasize, a quality of acceptance and openness. Uh, one of the ways that a, a metaphor that um, Bhikkhu Inalyo uses is uh, sati as a friend. Uh, and because it has the, the feminine um, gender in the Pali language, uh, so, so uh, Analyo kind of envisions Sati as, as, a, as a, a friend who is, um, you know, a female friend somehow, uh, uh, who, you know, has that quality, you know, who is, who is a, has a, a gentleness, has a, um, a receptivity, you know, at, um, an openness, um, you know, non-judging. So these, these yin um, qualities of openness and receptivity. So, uh, so it's, um, so, you know, in my practice of cultivating sati as a beginner, you know, there was, so much which I began to be aware of that came up in the body and mind that, you know, I didn't realize I was so driven by and, and, and I would be uh, so prone to judge myself and, and not want to see that and want to shut the door of my mind to, to those, um, to, rec to, to recognizing it. So, um, so, so having that openness and receptivity, and then a friend who is also always there. So even if we wander off and get distracted, and uh, then when when we remember, then Sati is there as our friend, uh, waiting for us to reconnect. So, um, so let's uh, let's move into a practice of um, mindfulness and then we will have some time afterwards for some, some shared uh, reflection and uh, questions. <coughs> so please take a posture which for you feels uh, stable and balanced and easeful. So, uh, so if you have been, you know, listening and you want to shift your posture, so we'll be sitting for about 25 minutes. So finding that sense of balance and sometimes it can help to just sway back uh, side to side and back and forth until you find that sense of center. And then lifting the spine from the base of the spine through the crown of the head, which just uh, tucks the chin in slightly and the, the base of the skull also lifts slightly. And this, this helps to keep a more awake posture. It, it, it kind of uh, supports not kind of going into sleepiness or dullness. My eyes can be closed, which supports um, a collectedness of mind, like gathering the attention into the body, into uh, 
breath and um, and if you find yourself going into sleepiness, you can let your eyes be slightly open with the gaze downward and soft. So um, I'm going to give some instruction in the first uh, sati patana, uh, which is uh, the mindfulness of the body. So let's begin by just feeling the body in the posture that we've taken, feeling the whole body. This sense of the posture of the body, even um, with the eyes closed, knowing how the body is comported uh, is a quality, uh, is a capacity that we have called proprioception. So knowing the posture of the body, bringing awareness to that sense of how the body is comported, noticing if there's some adjustment that needs to be made of the posture and taking the time to do that. If at some point you find that, that the posture is, has become quite uncomfortable and, and is, uh, it's a struggle to maintain it, you can mindfully shift your posture. So it's because the, the body becomes a kind of a, a base for our attention, for our mindfulness, it's not helpful to be continually shifting the posture. So, so over time, we find a posture that supports our practice, and we can usually maintain it for the duration. But if you need to shift it, do so mindfully, and, uh, and then maintain whatever posture you shift into. I invite you to bring awareness to the, the body, to, the, to bring a, a sense of presence and awareness into the body. So feeling sensations in the body, such as tingling or tightness, maybe soreness. Maybe warmth or coolness. And you may notice as you 
as you bring your attention to the body that there's a, a kind of arriving, arriving in this place, arriving in your seat, arriving in your practice. I think of it as a kind of a coming home. So in so many ways on a deeper and deeper level, we keep coming home to ourselves. Finding our deepest sense of home. In our embodied awareness the heart which is open to itself and open to life. And perhaps you're noticing as you bring awareness to the body, the, the movement of the breath in the body. So the Buddha began the Satipatthana Sutta by inviting practitioners to, to find a quiet place, to, to sit, to sit down wherever they are, or could be lying down if that's more supportive to you or standing to, to let go of our preoccupations, our worries, our preferences with how we want this or that to be in this moment and gather our attention into the body and into the breath. You might just ask yourself, where do I notice the breath most easily? When I bring attention to the breath, how, how does that feel? Where do I feel it in the body? If 
maybe it's most predominant in nostrils or or in the windpipe or in the rise and fall of the chest or the abdomen. What does the breath feel like? Does it feel relaxed or does it feel constricted? Does it feel deep or does it feel light? Neither of these are good or bad, right or wrong. It's just simply being aware, how is the breath expressing itself right now? And it changes. It may change even as we bring attention to it. So in this practice, we are cultivating a stability of awareness as we bring the attention back, since the mind will almost certainly get caught up in thoughts or fantasies or remembering something, planning and so on. And then perhaps just um, a sound or a sensation may call us back. So we then come back without needing to uh, reproach ourselves or reject whatever has been filling the mind. And perhaps even taking note of if there was a, an emotional charge to what was preoccupying the mind and body, we can perhaps feel that in the body, noticing How has the body been holding, 
expressing whatever it was that was hooking our attention and drawing us into some kind of uh, drivenness. Just coming back to the body and the body can be like a, you know, a wonderful ally, a friend, a mirror to reveal, to reflect back to us the quality, the energetic quality of what we were caught up in. And beginning again with feeling the body, feeling the breath. Feeling the breath in the whole body. So I invite you to, to explore uh, what that, how that is to, to feel the breath in the whole body, to maintain a quality of whole body awareness in connection to the breath. So we can narrow our attention to a very precise place where we feel the breath. And that is one way of cultivating mindfulness. Another way which is uh, more portable into our everyday lives is to feel the whole body, including the body breathing, and be mindful of the body in the body. That's a phrase that the Buddha used in the Satipatthana Sutta, mindful of the body in the body.
we come to the end of our formal practice, I invite you to bring to heart and mind the goodness of your practice, the, the beauty of your aspiration, in taking refuge in in speaking, chanting, these uh, the precepts, the aspirations for non-harming and virtuous action. And in the practice of letting go and coming back to this moment, this moment of awareness, this moment of tension, of attention. <clears throat> There's a, there's a blessing, there's a, a quality of goodness in this. And we can share this. We can share this with those that we know who, who need this blessing. And we can share it with, with all of life, with all creatures, with all, with all of Mother Earth. May the goodness, the blessings of our practice in our lives serve and support your happiness, well-being, and liberation of all beings. <clears throat>